Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, everybody. My name is Layla, and you're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad you could join us this morning, but before we get into the Word, let's take a moment and pray. God, we thank you for this time together, Lord, and we thank you for today, God. We thank you for your provision for each and every one of us, Lord, the blessings and the favor that you're pouring out on us, Lord. We thank you for our partners and our listeners, God, that you're blessing them, that you're causing them to increase, Lord, that you're blessing them when they come in and go out, Lord, their kneading bowls and their baskets, Lord, the food of their bodies, their herds and stocks, Lord, that you are causing them to excel in all they put their hand to, God. We thank you for those in leadership, Lord, that you're turning their hearts to you, God, that you are causing the events in the world to happen as you will, Lord, and we trust in you that you will have the glory, Lord and that you will have the victory. So we thank you for those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. Welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us as we continue our study of the Word and in the book of Acts. This morning, we are at chapter, we're still in chapter 12, but we are going to read verses 20 through 25. So can I have a volunteer to cover that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, let Charles. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Cyrus and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord, and having made Blastus the king's personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of a god and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry, and they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Amen. All right, so at this time, we're going to, with our normal custom, and open the floor up to each of you to give the opportunity for you to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And, of course, to ask any questions that you may have. So, who would like to begin? Yeah. Oh, well, you can go. Okay. Um, it just kind of struck me interesting that the people from Tyre and Sidon came to Herod to ask and petition that, that he, you know, he changed his actions. I'm not quite sure what they were. It hasn't the scripture didn't specifically say what he was doing to them, but the fact that they came to him to ask him for a reprieve, if you will, for what actions he was taking against them instead of trying to kill them, uh, kill Herod, that is themselves, and uh, do it in their own strength. But Herod, instead of humbling himself and taking care of the people in a in the way that kings in this time should have after the pattern of christ he decided that he was going to give a speech uh diatribe if you will and then we see what happens to him instead um because he didn't give god the glory so just just kind of like okay amen what else i just found it odd what which part of it is odd to you why he would why herod was acting this way towards the people like they didn't come with pitchforks and torches trying to burn his mansion down well i mean that was that was actually pretty pretty routine behavior like Mm -hmm. people paid tribute and things of that nature to stay in the favor of the lord of their land or the king or et cetera et cetera the different governors set into different places and that was pretty pretty standard um behavior for people at the time and even in lands that have kings set over them or governors to um try to do things to find favor in their sight so and then also for an unbeliever not to glorify god doesn't isn't rare either right um yes okay 
So, so we'll go into a little more detail, right? On the aspect of, I'll say history, right? <clears throat> no historian seems to know why they came, right? But clearly there was some sort of dissension. Or, but then let's, let's look at some of the, the finer details here. It's two regions, Tyre and Sidon. Technically, all right, there's, they're similar, right? They're, they're, they're usually, in close proximity. Yeah, they're usually named together in the Bible. Yes. So, but let's look at them historically. They are typically trading centers, right? There's a lot of commerce yes. goes through there. So then you have two cities, even though, yes, Denley is a region, right? They're very close there. So they are coming together, right? There's the natural saying, there's, oh, there's strength in numbers. Oh, there's, there's power and strength in the Lord, right? Yes. But then how were they coming? Were they coming above board and to just discuss what the issues were? No, they were coming because it says they had made who? Blastus. Blastus, the king's personal aide, their friend. So, mm-hmm. right. Um, so they were wheeling and dealing. Exactly. Bribing and stealing. Just to rhyme. No, I'm just playing. Wow. <laughs> <Lava. laughs> no. No, but they were, you know, they were working by natural means to try to gain access and favor to what? To, to whatever their needs or mm-hmm. desires were. Right? So, so let's look at that for a moment. But then it says very plainly that the people were shouting. So... So clearly they they got what they wanted or they got some of what they wanted, right? The specifics of what happened, we, it doesn't say, right? Or even if they thought it would be pleasing to him to speak of him that way because that exactly. was a, a common thought process among kings is that they were gods and et cetera, et cetera. So they could have been appeasing, uh, appealing to his ego and his flesh and what they were saying, whether they had gotten what they wanted or were en route to get what they wanted. Mm-hmm. But then there's there's the other aspect, right? Herod. Who was he appointed over? Uh, an entire region, but, but mm-hmm. where is he? He's over the Jews, right? As well, in As, addition to Tyre and Sidon. Exactly. But he tried to take God's glory for provision and all these things. Right? Yes. So we see a similarity there. With him, and actually you can even compare it with Satan, the devil, the adversary. Who was he? Satan, that is. He was the covering cherub. He was Lucifer, the, right? Son exactly. Of the, the Exactly. But then he wanted to elevate himself in the place of God. We see the similarity here. Yes. Even though the people were crying out and saying it. The Lord knows the thoughts and intentions of the heart. He knows what's being said and what we mean. What, Yes, he knows what's being said and he knows what we mean by what's being said. Whether we're speaking of ourselves or receiving the praise and the glory that only belongs to him. Mm -hmm. And I would say this, as we're we're looking at this and we're we're looking for the counsel of the Lord and wisdom from the Holy Spirit, revelation and understanding about what's what's going on here and why, um, also why it's handled the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Um, We should remember that the Antichrist is going to come and do what? the antichrist there are many antichrists that have that are in the world that have been in the world have come and gone but the one that we're talking about in particular that antichrist is going to do what with the abomination and desolation Uh and do what set himself in the holy of holies so in in the the third temple in the Mm -hmm. place of god and and try to have the people worship him as god but he is going to declare himself to be god and people are going to worship him and this will go on for a time right Yes. And, and spend some time, do some, do some research and some study. It'll go mm-hmm. on for a time. But to each one, the, the word of God says that each receives from the Lord based on his own works. And for understanding, I would liken it to the man in Luke 12. This was a rich man. I'll read it to you. I'm going to start at verse 16 and go through verse 21. It says, then he spoke a parable to them saying, this is Jesus speaking a parable to the people that were listening nearby. 
The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Now, instantly you think, well, that's about money. No, it's not. Not solely about money. It's about an ideology and a thought process and a mentality that says, I don't need God. And I'm not considering other things that are around, or that are around me. And I'm not considering the Lord to honor him and give him the proper place do him. So likewise, we don't know the measure of the fullness of mm. the sin that King Herod here, this, this version of Herod, had heaped up for himself. We don't know how many times God came to him and corrected him and said, hey, stop doing that. Watch yourself because you are heaping up sin. And that sin, that measure, just like it's described in Gen Genesis when the Lord spoke to Abraham, when he said the sin of the Amorites is not yet full, meaning there's a measure, there's a metric, there's a, a meter that's accounting this because it hasn't been brought under the blood of Jesus Christ. His metric obviously was full at this time. And he didn't realize at the people chanting, oh, the voice of a God and not a man was going to be, and him relishing in it versus correcting the people, that was going to be the, the last straw, if, if you will, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, if the, the one that tipped him over the meter of sin that caused mm -hmm. judgment to now be activated in his life. And that judgment wasn't something like going into bondage. It was death. Or we could give you another example, Nebuchadnezzar. Right. His judgment his, was to, be a, to be a beast or live as a beast right. for seven years. Mm -hmm. But then when he recognized the Lord for who he is and he acknowledged him, he glorified him. God. That's right. Exactly. Then the Lord restored him. And even to his place as king. Amen. Now, the penalty for all sin is death. Amen. Now, whether the death is instant or is parlayed, if you will, it seems delayed over time, that's not our our place to call what we think it should be, but we have to honor and respect the things of God and treat all sin and withdraw from it just like it was a death sentence on the spot. So what does that mean? That means don't entertain sin. Don't think, oh, it's just a lie. Oh, it's no big deal. I'll, I'll just lie a little bit longer than I got time. No, if you flip to, the, to Revelation, it says that liars will not enter into the kingdom of God. So we shouldn't deem sin big or little, but we should bring ourselves under the blood of Jesus Christ to receive forgiveness for those sins and then move forward in a way that honors God. We do have an accountability to cease sinning willfully. Yes, we know that we're flesh. And for someone to say, according to 1 John, if you say that you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. We're not saying that we're, we've never sinned, but there's a difference between sinning out of ignorance towards the Lord and sin, sinning as an unbeliever or willfully, um, right, and willfully knowingly. sinning. So the fact that there was judgment also means that there was a knowledge of what was happening and there's accountability because our God is righteous. If you think back to Jonah and Nineveh, they didn't know they were committing sin against the Lord, and they were they were heaping up that that manometer, that sin manometer was going up, and the Lord sent Jonah to minister to them to give them a chance to repent. Jonah didn't like it, and that was none of his business. He he's a servant of the Lord. He should have just went in and did what the Lord asked and moved on. But the people, when they were warned, they repented. And the um judgment or the destruction that was rightfully do them as a consequence of their actions was staved. It was, it was put off and they didn't, they weren't destroyed at that time. We know later on, they, you know, some years later they mm -hmm. were, they actually were destroyed because they returned to their previous actions. But, um, we, Oh, go ahead. Honey. I was going to say, but that, that shows the, the heart and the pattern of the Lord, just mm -hmm. his nature and his character and his heart towards us because you know, we brought up where I brought up Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was warned of a very similar thing as well, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And no doubt, because this is how mm -hmm. the Lord operates, he speaks to us first, first. directly. Mm 
Absolutely. And, and if we don't listen, then he sends a friend or, or mm-hmm. someone. Or a prophet. A, a prophet, or, yes. Uh-huh. A, someone that will speak the words of the Lord. Because, you know, if we didn't listen the first time, then mm-hmm. he's like, hey, no, let's sort this out. And and then if we still refuse to listen, well, now we have to deal with the Lord directly and whatever that consequence is. All right, and, and even with Nebuchadnezzar, there was, I believe, a period of almost a year before I don't know, he forgot or just chose not to heed the warning that he'd already received. But mm-hmm. then, you know, he glorified himself and mm-hmm. became a beast. And then his son, after seeing all that, did even worse. It, exactly. Defiling the, the um, articles that were sanctified to the Lord from the Lord's house and drinking out of it himself and giving it to his friends at a party. To party. And brought even more consequence on with, himself. With immorality and everything else that happens. And yes. he watched his father go through the same, that that trial period, if you will, that, that humbling period. And which was really God's grace and his mercy to him mm-hmm. because he could have just gave him the just due, which would be death. The penalty of sin is death. He could have done that, but he didn't. So as you're looking at your God, remember, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's a good God. And for us also remember Herod, this is after Jesus died on the cross. So salvation, believing on the like directly believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and having um, repentance or the um removal of your sin was available like permanent blotting out of sin was available but instead of partaking of that humbling himself glorifying god and asking for forgiveness from sins and coming into a a relationship with jesus christ he decided to clearly indulge in what the people were saying about him and reveling or relishing that they thought he was a god or calling him that and you know, you might go, well, that's not fair. And I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, God is God and you and I are not. That's it. And we are not going to, with our humanity, change his justice. What God, always what he does is right. It's always what, right, what is right. And so we know if judgment came, there was first a warning. There was first a, um, a coming to him, as you said, darling, the Lord saying, turn around, repent, repent. Holy Spirit is in the earth and he's knocking on doors of hearts making himself known. And he even made himself known in the Old Testament because how would anybody have any kind of relationship with with the Lord in any way if God hadn't done that already? But, you know, coming back to New Testament, he always knocks and he always gives us a chance. And if we refuse his chance, whatever that chance looks like, that is on us. That's not his fault. Mm -hmm. And he is not going to make the chances measure, meet our standard. We meet his standard. That's how it goes. And Absolutely. understanding that about the Lord and taking comfort in it because he doesn't have a wishy-washy standard. He says, choose life that you and your seed may live from Genesis to Revelation. That's the choice. Choose him so that you and your children, your household, your family, the things that he has placed into your care will live and it will remain. Oh, go ahead. Honey. There's another aspect I want to bring up, right? Because... Many have this uh, this thought that the Lord will not share His glory with anyone, and and there is truth in that. But here's here's the thing: it depends and on how it's used. It, mm-hmm. That and that's it. And that's what I was going to get to. How is it used? So, I'll say it in this way: context. Because if He did not share His love with you, or and I'll say it in this way: give you His love, what love would you have to reciprocate towards Him? Or glory? We're it, talking about glory. Well, I'm using love as the example first. Uh huh. Oh, okay. But then same with glory. In the same manner, if He did not give you some of his glory what then would you have to glorify him with in the same way of love right and that's first john that tells us we love him because he first exactly us exactly so in the same way everything that we have every good and perfect thing comes from the lord so if he didn't first give it to us how could we then give him something or present him something and you see that all the way through scripture even to the elders in Revelation who are casting their crowns before the Lord. Well, where did they get the crowns in the first place? Amen. They were clearly given to them, and they are casting them continually before the Lord. Because why? We're there to glorify the Lord. He's the one that did it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Like we were nothing but, uh, say, unfaithful, but unfruitful servants. We just did what was our due duty or diligence, right, toward the Lord. But we have to watch, as you you pointed out this out early, honey, about our mindset towards him. 
He gave us those things so we can reciprocate, so we can give them back to him full, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not holding anything for ourselves. And that's the mindset that we need to watch out for, which clearly in here, Herod did not. Amen. And if you think about it, the the scripture says that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It says that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ in another place. And then in another place still, it says that the Holy Spirit will take what belongs to Jesus and make it known unto us to share it with us, basically. And if he did all that, is he is he concerned or is he interested in suppressing us and holding us down? No, but the caveat is we have to come through Jesus. That's where we sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's where we we become joint heirs with him, not instead of him. So what Herod was doing was a replacement. What Satan did was a replacement. And instead of God, here I am. And Mm -hmm. that is absolutely wrong. Right. That is ungodly. And that is certainly from the devil. But the Lord, when we come through him, that's us coming through the door of Jesus Christ that Father said he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord Jesus declared that here in his earthly ministry. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes into the Father except through me. That is through Jesus. So when we come through the door, he welcomes us into an elevated place with him. Not instead of, not above him, not over him, not dictating to him, but willfully submitted to him, but then elevated with him. So we have no reason to try to snatch and do that on our own. And that it is an indicator that what Herod was operating under, the spirit behind it was the spirit of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And it was the spirit of the devil working through him and his pride in his flesh, bringing that about, not the spirit of God. Amen. And we can see a a clear line for us as believers as well to know where we are with or we, God. Or we should. Mm-hmm. You know, like how, do, how are we falling on the line of this? Exactly. Where do we stand with the Lord? Mm-hmm. And what is our mindset towards him? And what's his heart towards us? Oh, that, that never changes. Amen. Good, good thoughts. But our, our mindset should be in alignment with him and hold him as he is in his rightful place. Mm-hmm. So let's pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, I promise. Lord, just thank you for today. Just thank you for giving us everything that we need, Lord. Just giving us every opportunity, Lord. And giving us a chance to turn back, Lord. Lord, I also just thank you for just giving your giving us your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.